the other thing that's interesting is you were on Shark Tank. I was. So yes. as a fan of reality TV, me and yes. Sam both watched The Challenge, probably the trashiest reality show well, that there is. Well, tonight's the season finale of the Netflix one. Of which of one? The Circle? No, the one where they get married after living in a room. Love is Blind? Oh. Yeah. Wait, didn't it all come out already? Didn't they just it's release today. it? Today. today. No, I'm, at, I'm at episode three of that one. Um, good show. It's pretty awesome. Pretty good show. <laughs> uh, have you seen it? I haven't seen it yet. Do you know the premise? I do know the premise. They put people in rooms and if they don't see each other. Yes, yeah, so, so it's, it's actually married. pretty cool a as a ser- experiment. Oh, they have to get married. Yeah, yeah they, they have to get married. Or part. you get cut off the show. Like, literally, oh. you don't even get, like, eliminated Survivor style. They just edit you out. Like, okay. you're just not shown ever again if you didn't propose. And so what ends up happening is it's 10 days behind a wall. You talk to this person and you're speed dating, basically, behind a wall. So you're kind of, like, deciding who you like. Yeah. And then someone proposes through the wall. So they're like, can you come close to the wall, please? I'm, I'm on a knee now and I want to you know, ask you to marry me. And then, but the thing is that I thought that's where the show would end, but then they like put them in the real world together and they're like, all right, you're going to get married in 30 days and see what happens. And uh, it's pretty interesting stuff. Okay. So good job, Netflix. Shout what out to you. What were you asking her about? Everybody? I was actually Shark Tank because yes. um, tell me about how it came about. You, you applied many times, one time. How'd you get on? Yeah. So Shark Tank was an, inc- honestly, I am a huge fan of the show. I also am a huge fan of my own experience and that's not, I think what everyone has to say, but I always tell people, I think it can be a really game changing thing for entrepreneurs. Um, if you do it the right way, it is a lot of freaking work, a ton of work. Really? So I, once you're on or before you're on, before you're on. Okay. Um, so I would say like, so I, we aired in November of 2017. Go to the it beginning. Was, How'd you even know, audition? It was like a nine month process of, I would say the year of 2017, 80% of my year was Shark Tank. <laughs> so we applied. Um, it's a, and by we me, um, it's like a 50 page written application. Online it's or? It's, no, it is printed and written out. I tried to like use a PDF editor. I it mean, it was forever. like, yeah, like, you know, it was like a decade ago. So you write out. this whole so thing up? I write this whole thing out. I will be honest. I was, uh, I was um, a finalist at TechCrunch Battlefield in yep. 2016. The producer's scout. From gotcha. So, so they reached out, company. maybe. So they reached yeah, out. Cool. Um, so it's kind of like if you're thinking about American Idol, maybe, which I would never be, but you you either can get contacted and sort of After. put in the front yeah. and right. to audition, or you kind of you wait in line. Or yeah. wait line. So it's not that I had necessarily a better chance, but I did get shortcut into the application right. process. So filled that out. The application probably takes 40 hours. Um, wow. And then you have to sign all their contracts and basically sign your identity and image away um, <laughs> to ABC for in perpetuity. But um, and then from there you do a voice interview with producers. You do a video interview as well with the application. Then a, another video interview of your pitch. And then from there the producers work with you for about four months to get on it right. like what is your story? What is your brand? What is your script? Crazy. And it's ultimately your, what I think people don't realize. It's on a human Shark interest Day, story. It's a human interest story. You are there to make good reality TV, but it is your decision. The producers right. will help you and advise you, but this is your gig and it's up to you to decide how you want to display yourself and who you want to be on TV. Um, but so do you still remember your, not to air you. do you still remember so, your opening? Cause you probably drilled it like a thousand well, I, times. I did. I did. And I will tell you, I thought I was like really good and comfortable at public speaking. And then I did this and I was like, okay, I was really bad. And now, <laughs> now I, I now feel I'm comfortable. Good. Did you yeah. money from them? Um, I did. So I signed or I shook on the largest deal ever for a female entrepreneur in terms of valuation. Wow. So yeah, with Lori Grenier. She is on board. She's been tremendous. Um, because of QVC or what? And for me, it was really, at the time, we had no brick and mortar retail presence. And I knew that that was a priority for us to create a product that was like actually accessible and ubiquitous. And that's actually, in hindsight, been a really good move for us. But I felt that she would be invaluable in helping us to get to some of those stores. Yeah. She really helped with packaging and branding and making something that's accessible when you're trying to like sell a testing kit where either people think it's a DNA kit right. or they have no idea what it is. Right. Um, being able to differentiate that when you have like 10 seconds to grab something. How much of a check did she write? Um, so the deal we shook on was... Why do you keep saying shook? Because there's the shake on there's it and the then there's the actual there's deal. The actual What's deal? the actual deal? I can't disclose that. <laughs> oh, come on. However, well, hold on, hold on, um, it's different. different, yes. Better or worse? Better for the company. 
And probably better for Lori. And better because uh, why does the deal change? So normally there's like, they do diligence and they might change it probably right. for their so favor. You're saying it went better for you guys. It went better How does it improve? So there was a, and it's very case by case. So what happens after the show Can, can is, I pause you one second? I want to make sure you project because your audio, your, what you're saying is great. I want to make sure we're getting it all. So my audio paranoia. Just make sure you're, talk louder than you're comfortable talking. So after you shake on the deal on the show, um, a fair number of those deals, I think it's something like over half never come to fruition at all. And then another quarter or so actually change, and then another quarter get done at the terms that, I've had um, a bunch that of you should buy. Screw them. Yeah, I, I think it, these, each the shark, each shark has a different approach. So like I, they're totally, you then go into their management company, right? So you're going into Mark Cuban right. companies or Lori Grenier's companies. And so it's not a, um, I don't know what each shark's process is. I can say Lori's was super fair. They go through very detailed diligence on everything. But, but you know what? The show actually does diligence on you. They Beforehand. have a venture analyst on board. So they run diligence on you before you ever pitch. What was your valuation um, that you guys agreed on? I, I pitched. I, I, my valuation was $20 million post money. And how much did she invest? So that or was a, it was a line of credit deal at an 8% interest rate for 5% of the company. And was it like, uh, so, you know, hey, deal offer on the spot, or do you have this like long pause where you're like, can I think and write this down? Well, in my case, every shark was out, and right. I actually knew I wanted either Lori or Mark Green, or, uh, sorry, Lori or Mark Cuban, and so I was really excited about it, and so I really did want to work with her, and it was a good deal. So I actually sat on the show because you're supposed to negotiate. Right. I said, because it makes good TV. Yes. <laughs> um, and so I said, I know I'm supposed to negotiate, but I want to take this deal. Right. So I didn't. Um, you do have, it is really what you see. Like you can exit, you can talk about it with your partner, you can call a lifeline or a friend. Um, they may edit that out or whatever else, but you can take a minute to think right. about it. What's something people don't don't see or don't realize that is different from having actually gone through it versus watching it? What's a what's one difference? I think people know it's edited. I don't think people realize how long the actual time filming can be from when you walk in and walk out to like what they edit down to five minutes. So it, it varies, but mine was probably an hour and they edit it to seven minutes. Some people's have gone on up to two to three hours. Um, some are 15 minutes, right? And so I think you know it's edited to a degree, but I don't think you realize how much discussion actually happens. Was Lori investing her own money? She is investing her own money. Yeah. Um, so then, does she have a fund or is it literally just hers? It is in a fund structure, but it's her capital. How, it's her how money. How do you think she's worth? You know, I don't know. I will say she is a prolific um, salesperson in the sense that like the top three or four companies from Shark Tank, and I mean companies that have done like a quarter of a billion in sales, um, Squatty oh, Potty. Oh. Yeah. It, those, she it has a relationship with each of those companies and is invested in each of those companies. Um, so I suspect quite a bit, not to mention her own patent portfolio and the success she's right. had with products. But she they, has a great but, team. But do those pay cash flow? I mean, who cares if you, I mean, it's important, but if you own equity in yeah. that business. And there's not an exit. Yeah, so I don't know. where is her cash coming from? I don't know. I don't know. I'd be very yeah. Sam's going to get to the bottom of this. Yeah. I don't <laughs> know. Because well, because I also like Lori Green. Bad checks. Well, and I also don't She know. takes that Saudi money. No, I, each deal <laughs> is different, right? So like she does it just like an any VC deal is different, right? She's negotiating a deal with me right. that's different. I don't know what, what terms are, you know, with the rest of her companies. I do know she has put all of these companies on the map from Scrub Daddy to Squatty Potty. These companies that have incredible right. consumer She delivers. Now she delivers, yeah. I've got a Squatty Potty. So, so you do? <laughs> I'm yeah. telling you, I think every, it seems to be one? actually, no. I don't have one, but yeah, it does cool, seem, I, I mean, it does seem very popular, <laughs> yeah, appar it's... apparently. So, so. okay, so, um, so Everly Well qu question for you. Uh, when you actually get the test, how do you actually administer Wait, it on, at home? Let me ask one more question about yeah, Shark Tank, and then it. we'll end on Shark Tank. How much traffic did your, did your site get? Oh, yeah. So we... But this is back three years ago. It was it was November. We Which would be November. even better than now because there's more tra uh, people oh, watch yeah. TV more than. Right, and it aired the night before Cyber Monday. It was Thanksgiving wow. weekend. It was, couldn't have been a better day. My, all <laughs> of my poor team, they were wonderful. They canceled all their Thanksgivings. It was you know a lot of work, but um, what we got about thirty times our normal traffic. But we had an interesting experience. We didn't have this tremendous like huge spike the night of in terms of purchases. But we ended up doing about a million dollars in sales, which at the time was a tremendously large number for us, um, in like the four-day period after. 
right. um, the show. So there's been a little bit of this interesting thing for us that I haven't heard many other companies have, which is we doubled, over, like we doubled in that week on a run rate standpoint, and then we continued doubling the next month, and we never had that decline. Right. But we didn't have this spike in like the three hour period that we aired. Yeah, so we had a lot of traffic. You know how much traffic? I think like a million. A million sessions. uniques. In yeah, hours. uniques. Yeah. So, and we did, I mean, we had to, I mean, at the time we were not set up for that scale. Now we what don't even have Shopify? to think about it. We know we, we've always been on, um, uh, on, um, WooCommerce. Stripe, not WooCommerce, not Shopify. Um, big commerce. We've built, we've built on it now and like totally customized it. Uh, Something else. It's not. I know, but it's one of the big ones that actually. I think we should have gone to Shopify, but we didn't. Gotcha. So I shouldn't. Now I shouldn't name them because it's going to sound bad. Right. But shout out to Toby um, from Shopify. Yes, exactly. I like to think he's listening. Yeah. So. Um, Might be. We're trying to get him on. I was going to say that valuation, right? Yeah. That value, it, it, so. He also um, streams on Twitch. Great guy. Oh. <laughs> um, so yeah. So we saw a really good traffic increase, but it was an, it was a very different pattern. And Lori warned us about that. She said some companies it's like they sell out immediately, and some companies it's just a slow kind right. of a slow burn. So um, that was what it was with us. But we did not crash, um, which was essential. <laughs>